morning. Bill's never ending projects. Even though this is the uh, hottest summer on record, I'm out here messing around with it. Because uh, I can't stand this wheel on this side that it won't turn. I mean, I got the whole tractor off the ground. That one would go around. It's in neutral. Uh, so uh, I took this brake drum off. Brake cover. And I should have thought of it, but it's not a brake drum. It's just a cover to cover the brake drum. Cover to cover the brake drum. Anyway, I took that off yesterday. And uh, I couldn't figure out how to get this off. I'll show you why. So yesterday I took all the jagged metal off here and cut this straight. If it's just going to be the yard art thing for a while, uh, while I research it, and I'm not going to pay the uh, eBay prices for parts, so I'm going to have to wait till I get a parts tractor. Uh, so it's yard art for now. So like I said, I took the, uh, the brake drum off. And uh, that uncovered, that uncovered this brake drum. Now the brake drum, uh, I couldn't figure, I hit it, I hit it on this side and I hit it on this side like you would loosen up a, a car brake drum or something that I tried prying in between here. Uh, I never seen a brake drum that had a brake drum cover, so uh, you can't hit it like a car one. And anyway, it's not just over the brake shoes; it's it's uh, got a big nut that went on here that took an inch and a quarter socket, like a inch and a quarter socket. I happen to have one of those, and it had a special washer that locked into that groove. And then it also, on this side, you bend it to keep the nut from coming out. But out of this hole, and out of the, that hole, were two three-ace machine screws that took a flathead screwdriver. I think it's just to keep, somebody on the internet showed me how to do it, because I put this all back together yesterday, twice, because first I forgot to put the drum cover on, like I was going to leave it for a year. Then I took it off, put the drum cover on, because I'm not used to having a cover over a brake drum. I put that on, it looks like there weren't any bolts in here, but that's how they keep it on. They have a thing like that. The one on this side on the uh, drum cover uh, is broke off. So, I mean, it was just sitting on there with no bolts, so I'm sure it fits tight enough where the overlap is right here that it would have stayed even plowing and disking in the fields, it would have stayed. So, so, uh, I tapped out my, I tapped out my spark plug holes, my $30 tool came, and I was able to put them all the way in, and added a little more oil. Uh, but anyway, I took the rough stuff off this wheel. That's all I started to do. Uh, because half of it was gone, but it left it all jagged. Now it's cut straight across on both the top and the bottom. And I actually don't even have it jacked up high enough to put a, a wheel and a good wheel if it went all the, all the way around on. But since half's missing, uh, I just make sure the missing part is on the bottom. But back to the brake drum. So now uh, i seen that the guy had a puller. He used those two holes, those two holes to put his puller in, and then this bolt went in here. So I really didn't look at what I had for pullers. I just knew I had this piece from a scrapyard I might use someday. You tell me what it is. I don't know. It's... It's a thing that looks like that. Maybe it's off a combine where they move the uh, where they move the head up and down in holes. But anyway, it had a bunch of holes, and sure, uh, one side didn't line up. So then I cut the center out of one, so it was slotted. Then I welded a half-inch nut on there, so 
and I was hoping this wasn't cast, but it, it welded, I think, pretty normal. It's one of those biting flies biting me in the face. So now I'm going to uh, put this back in the tripod and I'm going to put this homemade puller on there and see if we can see if we can uh, pull this uh, pull this uh, brake drum off this drop axle. Up on top, that's called the counter shaft. Down there, that's called the uh, the hub and axle, and in between is a big bow gear. It's not a chain, it's a bow gear. And inside here, uh, uh, I would say this is the cover. I would say this is the cover that opens up the bow gear right here on this side. And mine has a shaft sticking out of it that's just supposed to be an end cap to cover up the uh, nut or something that holds the uh, axle in there, the drop axle. But somebody cut a hole in there and welded something on and made a shaft stick out so he could turn something, I suppose. I'm not sure what that is because uh, the other side, the other side is just, the other side is just a cap. Uh, right there, it's just a cap. There's no shaft coming out. So I don't know what that is, but I figure somebody made that. I don't see it in the part book anymore. Anyway, back to the brake drum. Okay. Uh, I, it was greasy. I had the idea to spray some PB Blaster on there myself, but it was greasy like that. Uh, I guess it's coming out of the, uh, the grease is probably getting from the differential. But anyway, let me get this homemade thing here. I didn't, I didn't make this bolt pointed because I think I got it crooked. I think I got it. Well, it looks pretty straight up and down, but it's not straight in that hole. Or, seems straight in that hole. It seems pointed off to one side. So I, can, I could take this and grind it and make a point so that it would go into the center. Of, they got on a lathe, they dug this out so that your puller could go in there. So this is totally for a puller. So I need a three-quarter socket to turn this in and out. I need to get these things on there. I turn it so I know you want it in far enough so you don't strip it. I turned it quite a few times. Uh, probably back it up. I wish the bottom bolt I found looking through my parts. Extra bolts I buy from the hardware store. I wish it was long as tough. I think I just went too far with that. But now I'm not going to know. Oh. That looks straight. Yep. I just had to back off the half inch. So then you want to tighten these so that it's straight, so you're not pulling crooked. But the reason I'm doing it is I can't turn that uh, drop axle hub. So I want to see if this is stuck.
see where the thing's coming out. Well, it's coming out mid tip then. Not in the center. So now with this wild bit, I guess it's a good thing I didn't put this wildest knot on the inside. Then I would have had to have longer bolts for the top. Okay, so I'm going to start cranking. And then I'm going to see if it's going to start pulling out. Yeah, it is. Okay, so it's not a big deal. It just needs this to do it because uh, I tried grabbing onto those uh, machine screws uh, that you take out to, uh, I mean, they put them in to keep the dust out. It's not holding this on because it's got the, the big nut. The big nut holds it on. So I tried to grab those machine screws when I backed them off a ways with the uh, with a regular flathead screwdriver, and uh, I couldn't get this to come out. So there's just because this puller makes it look easy. Let me get it right on there while I'm pulling it now. Geez, when I use the magnification of this uh, camera, I see where my bolt's hitting. It's way over on the edge. Hope it don't screw up the threads. In fact, it's so far over, it's going to start hitting pretty soon. this bolt, but I'm running out of threads now. I mean, I used the die. So that's where my threads run out. So, let me take this thing off and see. Now it's still holding. See. What do I got to do now? Tap more threads on here? It's, it's way out. Well, I'll come up with something, and then I'll turn this back on in a bit. zoom up there so you can see where the drum came out. See it's way out like that now. Uh, and the bolt went way into the inside and it, it must be ready to just fall off but it didn't so I'm going to have to put like a socket in there or something to start cranking it again. millimeter socket. I mean, I just grabbed the first one. If it didn't fit, I'd have to run back to the building. But it went in there. Now i got to hope the half-inch bolt don't drop into the center of it, but since this wasn't lined up on the center very well, then it 
probably won't. Foam is covering up my hole. Yeah, for an 88-year-old tractor, I'm able to put these in by hand. I never chased the threads because those bolts were in grease. So I could probably make this point down a little if I would put this one in further than the bottom one. Ah, oh, darn thing did drop right in the center of the socket. Oh, darn it. Maybe I could use a screwdriver to hold the socket crooked until it got a bite. But that probably won't work, but I'll try it. It goes right to the center right away. Maybe I'll back this off a little bit so it's crooked. I'm sure it'll drop right in. Yeah, it goes right in the center. So I gotta find a piece of metal like that that's solid. So back to the build. Okay, I came back with a stubby little inch and a half, inch and a quarter, whatever it is, bolt. Wouldn't work too good, but I put the nut on it and that should fill up the hole a little better. I uh, don't know if the nut part would go in. Well, that even does. I'll put the nut out so I have more to hit. I uh, suppose it'll be too long now. Let me back this off a little here. Well, it hardly has any threads left. Not a good idea, but... And then... It's too long. It should have been like an inch. But it's almost out. I mean, maybe if this... I don't know that it was frozen, but that's what I'm trying to find out. And we're getting movement again. There it is. Okay, it's off. And with all this white stuff on there, I can't really tell. I think maybe it's time to wipe that stuff off. oily to grip. Puller worked great. Now I can uh, see if I can turn that bottom hook. Be one of the first things I'll do. Let's get this puller off here. I don't know, with all that grease, I didn't think maybe the brake shoes would rust to the inside of the drum, but Okay, so there's the puller again. It was, uh, that was in that hole, that was in that hole. And then I welded that nut on and that's what forced it off. So now, and then there's that stubby bolt I put on there. So let me set this puller down at work. That's done. Done its job. Here we go. Let's see what, if there's rust in there. Uh, no rust. It actually shines. It's reflective. So I imagine it's something in the tranny that's keeping it from turning. But I had to know. So let me try turning this again. Oh, it 
turns now. Yeah. It was the brake drum. Uh, let me put this further down. I don't know if you were able to see it, but... I don't have any leverage without the rim on for the wheel. So with no leverage, you w as tough as this was before, I wouldn't be able to do anything but look it. It's turning. So it was indeed the brake drum keeping it, keeping it from turning. I'll show you the greasy mess in here. But it must have been stuck on there, but it's certainly not rusty because it's a greasy mess. So now that turns. I turn this, that turns. And uh, I guess it's a matter of loosening up the brake shoes or something, but of course for now, being a yard art, I could just leave that off, I suppose, and at least this wheel would turn, but I probably can clean it up and get it to turn with that on there. Alright, so that concludes the video. Uh, I guess I could do another, I did mostly close-ups of that wheel. It's the F20 1935. And uh, there's my cans. I put one up there. I put an orange one there on the uh, gas tank and then one back there on the uh, gas part. And close that up. I think I'll put something over the shift handle a piece of PVC pipe with a cap because uh, these where these springs are they seem to always leak water I haven't pulled any plug to see how much water is in the rear end yet I could probably do that I do know it's missing the cover off here which covers up this movement of the drive shaft when the engine's running but I certainly don't have to worry about that and this is that cracked front piece of the bow housing cracks on the other side I'll show you uh, those are these big plugs I got in there. It's too bad I had to pay 30 bucks for a tap to get them in there, but I did. Now they're in there. I should have bought four because I broke the original one. So, this is not a, uh, this governor must not be a, One that runs wide open all the time, like a cheap lawnmower, because this here, it doesn't have that thumb thing to turn it. And this here rod goes to here, uh, and then this handle goes up to here. So it goes from there to here where it pivots down here and this pivoting spot runs the other arm so there's two arms this flat one and this round one and the flat one brings you up to the I see uh, a guy welded a little piece of must be stainless because it's not rusty a little for a handle on there who knows probably in 1950 this thing had to have been sitting since 1950 or 1960 <coughs> So, 88 years old, I think it sat for about 60 years in a field fence row. And uh, originally from Muscaday, Wisconsin, the guy said that's where he pulled it out of a field. A, a guy hired him to clean up his yard and he put this for sale for... Uh, about the price of scrap iron, he put it for 250, and that would have been—I would have never been able to get it because this wheel wouldn't turn, and it, this wheel wasn't square, and all, every, that one had a rubber tire half off, and, and he had to pull it a bunch out of a—he said a sand, out of the sand, uh, 
Uh, so maybe that helped it if it was sitting near sand. But these wheels are definitely toast. I can definitely uh, weld a new wheel on them if I had to. But there's my cans I put on there. And they still use the air cleaner oil part where you put the oil for a top to keep it out of there. But it just sits out here. It's my yard ornament, my backyard ornament. And uh, oh yeah, there's the crack in that bow housing cover. So I went through a lot of parts that I would need a bow housing cover. And this is a part that I, I don't understand. These don't line up. This is the 90 degree linkage for the governor. And it doesn't line up with the carburetor. So somebody either put a manifold on here that's not right. And it's too low. Yeah, because this has to go downhill. This has to go downhill to reach it. And the rest come out of there. like my spark plug holes were but yeah I can see red all over uh, when I took the wheels off it was red so this is a silver silver tractor painted it's a silver tractor painted red where most all the uh, red's gone now and now there's no red nor nor is there silver so uh, I really don't know why that has to be it. Somebody put a manifold on here that doesn't line up. But what manifold would fit on here that that doesn't, I mean, it would have to be some kind of a manifold that would line up with all these uh, spots in the head. So how could it not line up with the governor? Or... But the governor pipe over here that be bent? Coming from over there? But I do know it has to hook to this hole and, uh, and this mounting thing off the uh, manifold, so I don't know why that's not straight. And even if I bought a new one, there was one for 175 bucks on eBay, and even if I bought that one, that's not going to line up with this either. So, I don't know. Either that governor's been moved, or you can adjust it to be lower. I don't think they're slotted. I just really don't know. But I do know the people that try to get these running again take this 90 degree elbow apart and loosen it up. Alright, well, That's the end of my third video on my yard, my yard, uh, art. Stay tuned. 1935. I found out why the wheel wouldn't turn. And I'm going to go in and, uh, drop this on YouTube. Thanks for watching. Bonus footage coming up. some footage because I haven't put the camera away yet and I kept working and I cleaned up all the grease out of it with gasoline put a drain pin here underneath it and it stuck in there and worked good to catch everything and I used my parts cleaner brush and a little steel brush and I just kept going at it and I kept thinking if it's not rusty then then either this anchor pin is stuck or the cam on this side is stuck. And the cam is worked by the brake rod to the foot pedal. So I come around and look. And here's the cam to the foot pedal. It's on. So somebody, when they parked this 60 years ago, locked the brake. And 
because that brake drum was not rusty. So I've got a, a pipe wrench here, and I'm gonna. I went and checked the other side. The other brake rod's free. Uh, I mean, I could tap this a little bit here. Yeah, it looks like it's gonna move. Uh, so I don't think I'm gonna have a problem. It seemed like it just should be tapping it with the pipe wrench handle. Uh, I think I moved that a little bit. So uh, I'm gonna put this back on the tripod and I'm gonna. Maybe I don't have to put any jaw marks in here. Maybe I could just tap on that with a hammer, but usually when you do something like that with something this old, I'll probably break that off. So I'm gonna do that. I don't I don't think it moved at all before okay, when I tapped it. Let's see if I'm gonna put big sharp marks in the shaft or if it's gonna move. No, it's not gonna move. Let's see if it move the other way. No. So chances are it's froze up in the in the housing on that side. And there must be some steel that I mean, if they gave it slack, then it would wiggle, so it's probably tight, and usually when you have something tight, metal sh shaft to something tight, usually it, unless there's brass bushings, usually it freezes up, so I put this on pause and see if I can find a way to move it. I am moving it. I went closer, instead of doing out in the middle, I went closer to the end of the axle. Yeah, that thing's way back now. End of the cam, I mean. It's against the stop. So now the thing would be to put it back together and see if uh, it's not stuck. I'm going to do that now. I was thinking as I was putting some tools away and getting some cleaner gloves uh, that this would have to be taken apart at some time and honed out or something. So then I thought, well, maybe I can just keep moving back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. So I did that with the pipe, pipe wrench. Uh, I was able to push it up with the foot pedal and bring it back with the pipe wrench. And now look at the springs bringing it back. So this broken cable definitely goes to that brake and it would go up and around to the steering column. So now steering shaft up in front. This is free like the other one. Or yeah, I see the other one. Column. It springs back. This one springs back. Yeah, let me put it back together now. Yeah. So, if only I'd have known that, but this way I got to see how this is all put together. Uh, and, and I guess it's always good out of doing something the hard way. If only I'd have known that brake uh, shaft was stuck. <coughs> Let's see if I put that on and it turns. Okay, it went back together where uh, after cleaning that stuff out of the brake drum, uh, not out of the brake shoe area with the drum off, I mean, and then loosening the cam up. Uh, when I put the brake drum back on, it went on all the way. I just shove it. As I pushed it in, it just pushed in all the way. And if there was something to grab, I could pull it right back out without a puller. So, uh, so now uh, I can turn my half a wheel. And if I put it in gear, like here's third, one second. Now it turns the other wheel over there. I don't know why. But now it turns the other wheel. But in neutral, but in neutral, ah, uh, sometimes the other one turns, but mostly it don't. So we got neutral. Uh, this wheel's off balance could be dangerous if it gets up like that it'll take off because it's there's no weight on the bottom. Uh, so that concludes uh, getting that wheel unstuck on a hot day in August 2023 and thanks for watching and uh, 
I don't know if, uh, what my next video would be, but uh, probably be uh, back on something I got.